Uh, Jashin is now an associate professor in Southern University of Science and uh, Technology. He's, he's going to talk about this topological Kagomi charge order. So I'm so sorry, Jashin, for the long waiting, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, you can take over now. Okay, okay. Uh, my, talk, my talk is kind of short, so I will quickly end and so everyone can be happy. Um, I'm very happy to uh, join this workshop, but uh, it's also kind of weird for me to have a Kagomi talk. Uh, so I'm thinking quite a long to how to justify my talk in this uh, workshop. So when I, uh, when I listen to the previous talks, I was always carry a um, um, question that uh, what would be the new directions for the quasi one dimensional topological material? Um, I, I think from those talks, it, it has grown to be a, a, a field, quasi one dimensional topological matter or whatever, but it has yet to become a leading field in condensed matter physics. Uh, that's to my limited understanding. So in, in the next few years, what would be the next excitement uh, for the quasi 1D topological material and how the people in this workshop help each other to promote this field to a broader audience? Uh, I think that would be the question that uh, we should uh, think about. And uh, uh, here I just uh, provide, uh, I think uh, uh, that's how I justify my topic. When I uh, first do Kagomi material of like five years ago, um, there is no such a field for topological Kagomi material. So gradually we identified, um, I think we have to go beyond a simple uh, band calculation topology and um, have some emergent uh, density wave order, superconductivity, um, and magnetism. Those, um, those interacting ingredients must be put into the quasi 1D topological matter. I think uh, that probably is one that uh, everyone should pursue in, in the next five years. Okay. So, so I'll just talk about um, this, um, the, the, the a parallel field um, called the topological Kagomi charge order uh, that we can see whether we can borrow something from this field. My talk would not be very technical. I just broadly talk about what has, uh, what has happened in this field. Mm, how do I hide this? How do I hide this so we can see the title? Uh, you want to hide what? I think hide this, this bar. Homogeny. So you, you don't see this bar, right? Which bar? I don't see. Uh, on, on the top. So you can see my title, right? Yes, I can see the title. Okay. okay. Then I think it will be fine. So initially, initially around the, I'll just briefly introduce how that's Kagomi being introduced into the condensed matter physics. Initially, um, around 1940, some, something like that, then Onsager uh, uh, gave a very nice, excellent, um, uh, exact solution of the icing model on a square lattice. So motivated by that, people have well, then turned the, turn to look at the triangle lattice, Honeycomb lattice, and eventually uh, the uh, Japanese physicist, uh, Suzy. He um, studied the icing model in a Kagomi lattice. And uh, Kagomi in the Japanese word means um, bamboo basket wooden pattern. Um, however, it is actually uh, widely used in East Asian countries, not only Japanese, not only Japan. Uh, like uh, in China, when I, uh, when, uh, my family uh, hanging around in Shenzhen. We go to one place called uh, Splendid China Folk Village, and we see many this kind of Kagomi patterns uh, in the old, uh, in the uh, in the in the Chinese um, folks. 
uh, Chinese culture. So I believe it's a generic feature for uh, East Asia when they have bamboo, they simply make it into the Kagomi type thing, uh, Kagomi type of pattern, then make it as a basket or um, or any other type of stuff. And then uh, in not only in Asia countries, in in in, in the Western countries and Western cultures, it has also um, emergent Kagomi-like pattern. For example, um, in the ancient, uh, ancient uh, uh, religion related to, um, uh, to the Star of David. And uh, this has been 1,000 years long. And, uh, um, and um, in the Western culture, in Western uh, alchemy, Asian alchemy, they also uh, like to use Kagomi as a as a representation or symbol for the basic element. So Kagomi uh, in this sense is widely used in both Asia and uh, Western countries. And uh, as, as we, we just discussed, um, the, the Japanese physicist initially introduced the Kagomi lattice by using, uh, by calculating the icing model uh, in a, in a Kagomi lattice. This is a spin model. And uh, later on, people have realized that um, since you have this uh, triangular um, unit, then uh, if there are anti-ferromagnetic interaction, the spin um, should be highly, the spin should be highly frustrated. So this lead to a large field of uh, quantum spin liquid which uh, does not feature any long range magnetic order. Actually in the initial uh, initial COC's paper, he has pointed out that when the uh, spin interaction is anti-ferromagnetic, there, uh, there is no phase transition. Well, the, when, the, when the interaction is ferromagnetic, there should be a, a ferromagnetic uh, phase transition. Uh, then uh, around um, uh, around the nineteen thirties, uh, there is a big debate uh, for quantum uh, magnetism, whether it is uh, uh, local as uh, the Heisenberg's view, local magnetism, the the magnetism magnetism uh, arises from the localized spin, or uh, on the other hand, Stoner also also proposed that the magnetism can be collectively coming from the electrons. That are traveling around the crystal. So this lead to people to propose certain kind of uh, electronic models to produce magnetism. And that time, around the 1990s, there are this uh, so-called flat band magnetism. There are many lattice models. That then people found they can feature flat flat electron band, and uh, this flat electron band can lead to um, ferromagnetic instability. And uh, uh, and the, the, that that time, um, the Mike Mike has uh, proposed uh, uh, proposed uh, a calculation, uh, essentially a Hubbard model on the Kagomi lattice. So after he write up the Hubbard model on the Kagomi lattice, then he naturally derived the Kagomi electronic band structure. That's uh, uh, maybe the first time that Kagomi electronic band structure has been revealed. And uh, then, of course, he has identified the perfect flat band as well as the Van Hoff singularities and Dirac cones on the corner of the uh, electronic uh, brain zone. Then the first uh, important concept for the Kagomi uh, electrons will be the topological matter. Now, uh, uh, interestingly, uh, the the first or uh, the pioneering uh, Pioneering a theoretical model is actually uh, done by Nagos around uh, 2000 when he uh, actually studied certain kind of um, certain kind of uh, chiral magnetic uh, chiral magnetic order, and then this uh, um, the, the spin has non coplanar chirality, that means uh, spins are not on the same plane. Uh, then he can, uh, through his calculation, he found that there is kind of a spin barrier phase that effectively opens uh, Dirac gap on the, uh, for the Dirac fermion. 
and this direct gap uh, can lead to a quantum knowledge hall effect when the Fermi level field within uh, this gap uh, bearing uh, a certain similarity with uh, how that model for quantum anomalous Hall effect. But this kind of uh, spin barrier phase is very hard to be realized uh, in, experiment, in experiment or in real materials. Um, then um, luckily we got a rap rapid development of the uh, topological insulator. For the topological insulator, people have realized that uh, the spin orbital coupling may be uh, play an essential role to opening a Z2 topological gap. This Z2 topological gap, when further adding magnetism, essentially, especially the auto plane magnetization, uh, then uh, we can similarly obtain a churn energy gap, similar to the uh, initial Nagosa's proposal that there will be a churn energy gap. And uh, when the Fermi level field within the churn energy gap, there could be a quantum mass hall effect. And uh, uh, more than that, um, by, uh, by simple um, analysis, one can find that uh, when, the, when the chain gap is large enough and uh, when the Fermi level is uh, slightly away from the uh, chain energy gap, the, there can still be very, hard, uh, very large anomalous hole conductivity, which is um, generally on the order of the uh, chain energy gap versus um, energy of the direct cone. So when these two are comparable, uh, we can still uh, obtain a uh, very large, or people call it a giant, anomalous hole effect. Uh, that is widely observed in many Kagome magnets. Another, uh, another parallel feature would be the uh, strong electronic interactions. When we mention electronic interaction or electronic correlations, um, like the twisted bilayer graphene field, people naturally think about the flat band, because uh, when the kinetic energy is quenched, uh, then any sort of uh, correlation will, any standard of cooling induction would make the uh, correlation relatively large. And uh, as a flat band in the Kagome lattice behave uh, sort of like, sort of like um, uh, 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 so-called, uh, sort of like, uh, Lando level. So uh, as we know, when we partially fill a Lando level, uh, there could be a fractional quantum Hall effect. So the initial interest would, was how to, uh, the people propose when we have flat band in the calculator, it can feature ferromagnetism. And uh, uh, when there is a spin orbital coupling and uh, ferromagnetism together and uh, additional partial filling of this flat band, there can be uh, high temperature fractional quantum Hall effect uh, that is uh, theoretically proposed, but has not yet been uh, experimentally realized. Then after the uh, after a rush on the flat band, people uh, theory people look at the Van Hoff sing singularity fitting uh, because Van Hoff singularity also have divergent density of states leading to Fermi surface instability. Uh, Especially if we look at the Fermi surface of the Van Hoff, uh, Van Hoff fitting, we can obtain parallel uh, Fermi surface. Then uh, this parallel Fermi surface will have large scattering space for, the, uh, for this uh, nesting vector. So that will lead to uh, many kind of density wave orders. So people have proposed uh, spin density wave, charge density wave. Uh, one particular interesting point proposed by Tomo, uh, Ronnie Tomo is that uh, there could be a certain kind of uh, density wave order that is spontaneously block, uh, spontaneously block time reversal symmetry. So if uh, this kind of uh, time reversal symmetry uh, density wave order happens, uh, it can also lead to a kind of uh, topological, uh, topological turning energy gap. There, there can also be uh, a non uh, hall effect and uh, uh, carrier age state. Particularly, uh, this uh, time reversal breaking, broken charge order um, bears certain similarity with the uh, loop current model for explaining the pseudo gap phase in Kubrits. That is one um, interesting model proposed by Wama. Um, 
in the in the nineties. So th this uh, build up some similarity with the high temperature superconductivity field. Uh, also, uh, another interesting point is the uh, uh, people started to look at uh, the superconductivity property because uh, because of uh, when we have density wave order, it can be a natural precursor of the superconductivity. So people um, also theoretical model the superconductivity um, initial thought was to dump a Kagomi uh, spin liquid because um, at that time uh, you can see the years 2009. At that time, there is one trend to believe that the Cooper superconductivity is a dumped quantum spin liquid. So uh, I, I guess the people at that time think about how about we directly dump a, a spin liquid candidate to see whether it lead to hydrogen superconductivity. I guess that's their initial uh, initial thought. And then uh, the surprising uh, finding is that uh, they found the uh, the order parameter of the superconductivity uh, blocks time universal symmetry spontaneously. So this uh, is a kind of exotic superconductivity. So then uh, come to the material uh, and the experimental side. Um, as said that many of these Kagomi material have large or giant announced hole effect. And people can look at its electronic structure initially. Uh, I don't think was a big shot uh, around 2018. At that time, we also find some interesting pneumaticity feature. I won't go to detail. And uh, this kind of pneumaticity can also be in tuned in certain sense. And when we by the vector magnetic field, and when we withdraw field, it uh, can to recover to uh, a pneumaticity state. Uh, but uh, the problem was that uh, for this material, the spontaneous magnetization was uh, within the Kagomi plane. So that uh, was against the, the initial proposal for the uh, turn gap that would require an outer plane spontaneous magnetization. And they also have some additional tin atom in the center of the Kagomi lattice, uh, of the iron lattice, Kagomi lattice. So that would, uh, um, as we thought, would uh, lead to certain additional hoping that breaks the ideal Kagomi uh, band structure. So then, what we turn to another material, um, this 166 material. Uh, 166 material have, um, have um, especially for the turbium, uh, 166 have uh, this out plane spontaneous magnetization. And uh, we identified uh, the chain gap direct dispersion by Landau level imaging and, and correspondingly, uh, and the direct uh, gap, there is an uh, edge state. Uh, precisely within the chain edge gap, and also exhibit enormous hole, enormous nurse, uh, various enormous transverse effect, and uh, uh, various uh, transport quantum oscillations. The, uh, the good point is that uh, for this kind of uh, research, I think it's a set, uh, set up a new uh, paradigm that um, we can match the uh, spectroscopic data, not only within itself. Uh, build up some bulk boundary correspondence, but also we can build up some very curvature connection with the transport. So we can do some scaling of the transport to extract the uh, very curvature contribution that then this can be uh, mapped directly with the spectroscopic data. So build up some, uh, at that time we call it a, a bulk boundary barrier correspondence. Uh, another uh, interesting uh, a large family of material is uh, uh, Kagomi wild semi-metals. For this material, as, uh, as wild from him, um, by definition, it actually defined by the three-dimensional momentum space, Kx, Ky, Kz. And then there are, uh, there are current charges uh, for wild fermions and on the surface of uh, the crystal the projection of these two well fermions, there would be a Fermi arc. So uh, by definition, the while Fermi exists in three-dimensional materials. So only when the Kagomi material have strong C-axis coupling, it can uh, be uh, a while candidate. A magnetine is one of these uh, while candidate because this is a direct stacking of the Kagomi lattice. 
So the CX hoping, of course, is strong. And uh, for the Cobalt team solver, because solver has a um, strong ionic bonding between um, the Kagome layers. So it can also have what, dominant wild physics. In this sense, when once it has a strong C axis uh, coupling, it actually uh, divert a lot uh, from the uh, from the initial from the Kagome lattice uh, intrinsic Kagome lattice physics. So th these are emergent wild physics. So of course there there are wild fermions that uh, their distribution has to be uh, has to be uh, constrained by the magnetic structure. That's why we can see the magnetine and the cobaltine solver have very dramatically different well uh, distribution. That's because their magnetic structure are very different. And of course, on these two materials, people have detected uh, um, uh, negative magneto resistance that is uh, uh, consistent with the uh, uh, Carroll anomaly expectation for the well physics. Uh, one extraordinary uh, finding is on the magnetine in that it has, uh, it can be made into thin films uh, with room temperature, uh, giant zero field enormous Hall effect. So that lead to uh, great potential for, uh, for the application. For example, the, uh, the Japanese group has, uh, has made, a, a, made a device by using some heavy metal deposited on the magnetine thin films and they can uh, electrically uh, manipulate the magnetic structure of uh, uh, of the magnetine and correspondingly the anonymous hall uh, effect. So there is the one uh, distinction um, of so in our paper also one distinction. What would be uh, how do we since both the wire magnet and the uh, Kagome um, Kagome chain magnet both exhibit large anonymous hall. How do we understand their difference? Uh, we, we have some kind of discussion in this review paper. I won't go to more details. I just want to show uh, show you, you more emergent physics from the Kagome uh, lattice. Um, the many people, many group turn to the studying uh, some flat band. Um, initially, people identified I don't think has a, has many kind of flat band. And then people. Uh, find better, better materials that uh, realize the parabolic uh, band touching. I think that is uh, one key feature of the Kagome flat band is that it has a band touching and the gamma point, a brilliant zone center. So once we have a spin of the coupling, there, um, at this place, there will open a Z2 topological gap. And uh, one interesting, interesting feature was uh, and at that time was uh, uh, how how do since we those Kagome material are all um, formed by d orbitals, how does d orbital rearrange themselves to become flat in momentum space? And then people found it, that they actually form a ring like pattern. This is a dxz dy uh, z orbital projected on uh, to the Kagome plane. So we can see they actually form a ring like pattern so the their wave factor functions essentially um, can cancel with each other uh, within this ring so the, their um, uh, orbital can be localized a uh, similar stuff has been similar uh, this uh, ring like pattern has been identified for the phonon flat band uh, it also have uh, parabolic band touching similar to the electronic flat band for the phonon flat band um, we can see uh, it actually also lead by the lattice distortion of the hexagonal ring. They discard along the same direction. So their joint force for this distortion uh, cancels with each other uh, for uh, outside point. So this kind of uh, phonal mode uh, would stop, would not propagate. So that be, uh, they become flat. And uh, with spin orbital coupling, and the multiple magnetization, there, uh, this, uh, this, this gap can also be a, uh, this gap is also a chain energy gap. So that can lead to various of uh, very curvature physics. Uh, one physics has been discussed is uh, this uh, orbital magnetism, similar to the orbital magnetism that is widely, now widely discussed in the twisted bilayer graphene field. And also since we have a phonon flat band, 
it can be regarded as a bosonic mode. So that bosonic mode can couple to can couple to the electronic structure that lead to can further lead to superconductivity or uh, dense charge density waves. This kind of what is strong electron phonon coupling. And uh, um, there can also be um, be similarity to the heavy fermion physics. Uh, for example, when the so Josh, may I have a question here. Uh -huh. I may have a question here for the yeah, super yeah. So, uh, yeah, so the the for the phonon band structure, I think you only show a particular type of uh, phonon modes, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so, only so how do you know that, uh, that mode is responsible for the superconductivity observed by you? Uh, probably irrelevant. Okay. But uh, uh, th th this is, uh, I think this is a cobalt team. It does not have superconductivity. Uh, for the particular material, when we find the phonon flat band that can interact strongly with the electronic structure, but uh, for the cobaltine, is um, most of uh, cobaltine is belong to one one material in our uh, language. Is belong to one one kagomi material. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the one one kagomi material, most one one kagomi material are, are magnetic, but only cobaltine was non magnetic. Uh, was non magnetic. So we think probably this uh, uh, electronic phonon coupling leads to some instability, superconductivity, or um, that's the way of instability that compete with the magnetism that leads okay, to some exotic physics. But, but generically, uh, phonon flat band can be a mode, bosonic mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are two ingredients. One is you have to have a sharp mode, and then the other is has to couple to the Strong electronic phonon coupling lambda has to be large to have a certain instability. But I think generically lambda is not large for phonon flat band. Yeah. There has to be some certain kind of symmetry match to make it uh, um, both large and uh, divergent. Okay, uh, I'll go back Thanks. to this. Um, I'll go back to this um, hyperformia uh, analog. So when we have many material, cognitive material have flat band, then when the interaction is strong enough, a highly correlated material in those material, uh, one uh, sometimes occasionally can find that the, under the Fermi level, there will be a resonance. So we used to interpret this kind of Fermi level in, uh, resonance as uh, uh, results of the uh, as results of the a strong interaction between the flat band and the itinerant uh, band. Uh, similar, we use some, this is a model calculation with um, use some uh, this uh, Anderson, uh, Anderson model or uh, heavy forming lattice model. Uh, so the, the flat band that behave as um, F electron, behave like F electron. So it can hybridize with a parabolic band to exhibit resonance feature around the Fermi level. So most exciting part would probably uh, be the uh, discovery of uh, density wave and superconductivity. Actually, superconductivity has long been observed in many material with the Kagomi lattice. Initially, we actually before the 135 system was was discovered, we essentially actually collect, uh, collaborate with uh, Nakasuji to grow this. Uh, uh, 132 system. It actually has a, a highest the TC, 7 Kelvin uh, for Kagomi superconductivity. But it's just that this is not cleavable. So, we lack of uh, state of art spectroscopic data for, for this. And then uh, 135 was discovered by Wilson and uh, his postdoc. Uh, for this material, initially, uh, people found a certain kind of uh, transport anomaly around 100 Kelvin. 100 Kelvin is a big shot because uh, most Kagomi superconductivity uh, was uh, just uh, around one Kelvin also. So 100 Kelvin, suddenly um, we jumped two order of magnitude uh, in energy and uh, temperature. Then many techniques can involve and uh, have uh, their own discovery. And then uh, STM, I uh, find a certain uh, two by two chart ordering. And um, since STM is service technique, we don't know what happens along C-axis. Then X3 further identified actually along C-axis, there's additional plus two uh, super lattice. So it's actually a two by two by two, uh, the three Kagumi lattice super uh, lattice. There are many uh, research directions 
uh, for example, STM and the folding mission characterize how does the uh, what's the what is would be the electronic feature of uh, the CDW and STM find some kind of uh, V shaped gap and then uh, folding mission find uh, okay the gap is highly anisotropic it only opens around an endpoint and then disappears between two endpoints so this support the uh, the Van Hoff singularity probably. Uh, is a leading driven force for the formation of uh, uh, singularity because the Van singularity exists at an endpoint and the endpoint has the largest energy gap. So that uh, makes it, them to conclude that uh, Van singularity is a driven force for the, for the uh, CDW. And so also there are um, uh, many detailed structure investigation uh, one particular uh, interesting point is that uh, because it's uh, an additional C axis is uh, additional uh, by two subdivided, so it's a uh, two by two by two, three two subdivided. So that leads to a geometrical pneumaticity. So we can see this is a, a star of David or anti star of David kind of distortion. And then if we uh, put another layer, and shift it by pi, then we have some kind of geometrical pneumaticity. So this has nothing to do with the electronic pneumaticity. It's just a structure, structure feature. So I don't know why many people write to write a pneumaticity paper, many pneumaticity paper, but essentially to my understanding, it's just a certain kind of structure, um, broken C2 symmetry to C2, C, uh, broken C6 symmetry to C2 symmetry. Um, there is not very exotic as compared with other system with spontaneous broken electronic pneumatics, uh, electronic uh, C C6 or C4 symmetry. So this uh, pneumatics is a, a kind of a structure driven. Of course, one can ask uh, what is the driven force for structure, but I think that's another another question. So, so basically, and, uh, if they are the threefold rotational symmetry is unbroken. But because of the pi rotation between the two layers, it, it is broken, right? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. a structure stuff. Yeah. Of course, the one structure, if we look from top down, the structure is broken C6, then uh, electronic would follow structure, right? Right. So electronic will have to, uh, will have to broken its uh, C6 symmetry to mm -hmm. down to C2. Um, that, that is not a big deal, to my understanding. And uh, um, what could be a big deal or could be a um, new um, new direction would be, uh, as I said, there are kind of uh, some, some, some experimental results for the time reversal symmetry breaking. Uh, for example, it has uh, STM see some many field induced chirality and uh, anonymous hole. There are some anonymous hole results. Uh, usually you don't see, uh, although the anonymous hole isn't, not as good as uh, in the Kaguin magnet, which have pure spin magnetism. It's um, anonymous hole is not that perfect, but it is still uh, strange for metal to have some uh, nonlinear hole response. And uh, some uh, on some USR results and some curl effect uh, still debatable curl effect and some recent tra carol transport results. Um, I think these are all still in, in a progress, not concluded yet. Uh, for example, in, in the initial study, uh, one puzzles us is when we see this uh, Fourier transform from our STM data for material 135 system, we see uh, even though the black peak has similar intensity and the charge order, two by two charge order um, vector peaks, uh, these three has different uh, intensity. This is a uh, so we kind of define a chirality. We can counting it from we can count it from the highest intensity to lowest intensity. Define it as a left chirality and if the left hand chirality, and then we can define right hand chirality. This is also a similar result also by obtained by USTC group. They study one three five system. We also find similar stuff. The the black peak has similar intensity, and then the by two vector peak has different intensity. Uh, so, because it has uh, been reported that there is certain kind of anonymous hole, uh, although at that time the anonymous hole study has not 
uh, identified the CDW. So when we identify both CDW, so we thought that there could be some kind of uh, magnetic field response. So uh, then we switch field and find the clarity indeed can be switched. So that lead to uh, the following discussion of parallel uh, CDW and etc. I won't go to too details. Um, and then um, it's about uh, the super connectivity stuff. Uh, it is still in uh, in heavy discussion and investigation. I just want to point out that uh, actually there are two pioneering experimental and uh, uh, theoretical proposal that uh, can be a good reference for us to think about the this direction. Uh, for example, uh, Mattis, uh, a famous guy, and the uh, 1950s, he identified the one uh, C C um, cesium rucinate 2 as uh, um, with Kagome lattice, he just direct call it the ferromagnetic uh, superconductors because it has a uh, ferromagnetism in, in the superconducting material. And then uh, Xiao Gangwen and Patrick Lee also, when they study theoretical models, they also find uh, this stopped Kagome system broken time rule symmetry uh, spontaneously. So that, that, driven, that drives us to think about the the um, intertwinement between superconductivity and magnetism. And so one Hagome system in that you know a paper by uh, Shogun and Patrick. So what oh, is that, that refer, the Fermi energy they refer to? I, I think uh, I don't see even a, a tight bonding model. It's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, is they, they call it the Chen Siemens theory. They use a directed Chen Siemens theory too mathematical. It's beyond my my knowledge. I can only yeah, understand. understand it, it you yeah. Know, yeah, my 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 question is really, you know, where's the Fermi energy after doping? Yeah. <laughs> Could compare with the Kagome tight bonding model, right? Yeah, yeah, that I don't know. Okay. I never they, they don't use tight bonding la language it's because the band structure is too is too is too interesting, right? I mean, yeah, you no, know. they they I that's. Um, well, I also have this question, but I when I read their long PRB paper, I, I don't see a tight bonding model. Okay, that's they, fine. They use a completely different language than, than other paper. Maybe you can understand. Uh, it's beyond my knowledge. Okay, I, I can I only read, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can only read through the abstract that is a called the time rule symmetry broken superconductor. Um, that's my initial impression. But I, I cannot understand uh, more detail. And they also claim some kind of exotic 4E uh, vortex or vortices, uh, 4E pairing. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, there, there, <laughs> there, there, there is some you know, experimental efforts uh, by the Jim. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, there is some, some um, little part experiment. Uh, but anyway, uh, from an uh, experimental uh, point of view, initially, um, the mu sr uh, the claim is uh, the charge order broke time rule symmetry spontaneously and then um it is claimed that uh, if we, uh, persist into this time rule symmetry persist into superconducting state and recent progress is that uh, uh, they can use pressure or doping uh, to completely suppress the cdw and to this region then they can clearly uh, obtain time rule symmetry uh, broken superconductivity. So without a CDW, the superconducting state indeed uh, broke uh, breaks time rule symmetry. So that, that is one progress. Uh, other progress is that um, use some Umura plot. This is a very famous plot in high DC material. So this is uh, um, is uh, here uh, as a uh, strongly correlated superconducting material and uh, BCS superconducting material are around here. So uh, Kagome material uh, is kind of uh, near the uh, cuprates. So it's kind of moderately uh, correlated. Uh, this, uh, this time rule symmetry broken uh, tard order or superconducting order uh, usually requires extended cooling action. And uh, uh, this correlated uh, superconductivity actually also requires cooling action. So that may be a, a, a link between uh, these two kind of physics. So they all, all both point to the uh, so the moderate correlating physics. Uh, so next, I will just talk about one specific 
um, specific technical um, technical work. Do I still have time, or we can conclude here? You still have like uh, eight minutes, including. Eight minutes. Okay, I'll quickly go through this little project. So, um, at that time, we uh, when we studied 135 system, we were uh, thinking um, there are many papers, I many STM papers. We were thinking that those papers, including ours, are not done on directly on Kagomi lattice. They're actually on the antimony lattice, honeycomb lattice, on top of the Kagomi lattice. Well, STM, uh, usually when we study Kagomi magnets, we prefer to look at the directly on Kagomi lattice. Um, but the 135, by its cleaving nature, it just simply does not yield a gummy surface. So uh, luckily we collaborate with the rice people. They find a perfect material, iron germanium, that have this uh, CDW uh, order. And uh, you can also review Kagomi lattice. And uh, what I put in their paper is the honeycomb lattice, uh, not Kagomi lattice. So we simply want to write a Kagomi uh, paper because we have a hard time when we when we write some uh, Kagomi uh, Carol chart or the paper for PR journal always end up in PRB. So we determined to have uh, one PRL. We just uh, submit to PRL and uh, struggle a little bit um, to publish there. Now also address the referee questions. So there's a, uh, it's like a, with the quasi 1D research, you always have many debate. In our field, we also have many debate, uh, many inconsistency. So we have to clarify some inconsistency with the previous work, why some nature material and nature physics has different uh, interpretation and different results. We will we'll have this kind of long discussions in, in a technical way in the PR journal. So uh, then oh, our results is uh, still this have uh, some kind of clarity. The, even though the black peak have a similar um, intensity, the two by two chart order have different uh, intensity. And we characterize this um, CDW gap that disappears above uh, 100 Kelvin, that's its CDW transition temperature. And uh, for this material, it's an antiferromagnetic material. This A type of antiferromagnetic along C axis. So it becomes antiferromagnetic. So we use uh, spin polarized STM to, to just demonstrate uh, indeed antiferromagnetic. antiferromagnetic. So we polarize the uh, tip. Uh, to spin up, and then we image the Kagomi step edges, and we find the intensity become dramatically different between even and old layers. And if we switch the tip spin to be down, and then the intensity got switched. So that is a perfect direct demonstration of antiferromagnetic structure for the uh, crystal. And also some additional detail. How large is spin polarization? It's around 10 to 20% um, polarized. This is very standard. Uh, usually, spin polarized signal is very small. And then uh, the focus is uh, to extract the CDW signal. So we have to uh, use spin contrast map for the uh, four territories. We use spin up data to minus spin down data. So extract them, these two maps, and then we obtain the spin contrast data. And we perform Fourier transform, we got the uh, two by two um, CW order, and we found its clarity. And uh, interestingly, uh, for the neighboring territories, the clarity of the chart order are reversed. Uh, this is also similar to our uh, previous uh, experiment in 135 system that magnetism can manipulate the clarity, or they can couple with each other. So that is uh, some kind of uh, spin uh, mechanism coupling, a uh, spin and a uh, uh, chart, carrot chart coupling. And then on with the non-magnetic tip also reproduces a clarity switch between nearest um, neighboring uh, Kagomi surfaces. Of course, another uh, theoretically considered uh, topological Kagomi chart order was not only you have some kind of uh, um, clarity and uh, some kind of optimalism capital to clarity, but it also should have edge state within the topological gap. So that will become uh, another key checkpoint. Then we, we just realize, uh, unlike 135, we don't have the Kagomi edge. The, here we have Kagomi edge, we can realize its edge state. 
um, that is uh, um, exist within the CDW gap. Th this is uh, uh, usually not this is not um, observable in many um, CDW material. For example, for example, niobium disanonide is a classical CDW. Material. It don't have edge state. Um, only this uh, Kagomi material seem to have CDW or Kagomi material have some robust edge state. It's uh, robust in a sense it uh, does not care about the irregular um, shape fluctuation of the edge. It's uh, just everywhere along the edge. And then it only exists within the CDW gap region. So outside of the gap, we don't see a robust edge state. And of course, uh, when we elevate the temperature to above CW transition around 100 Kelvin, the age state also disappears. So it couples with the CW order. Okay, my conclusion is uh, there is certain kind of uh, many body driven topology for the Agumi chart order. And I'll thank my collaborators. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Jiaxin, for the very interesting talk. So. Any questions from the audience? I saw one from uh, uh, in the chat. It's from Xiong Huan. Do you want to ask you the question yourself, or I can read it? Uh, so, so he or she says, "Ah, uh, says it is Jiaxin. Ah, uh, thanks for the great talk. So, just read a uh, STM paper." Report an observation of the three dimensional charge density wave by observation of the CW phase shift along a unit cell, uh, along a one unit step edge. So he says that it looks like STM can uh, uh, tell the out of plan uh, charge density wave. So do you have some similar observations? Uh, yeah, I agree that they can, uh, they can tell, but. Uh, um, for the iron germanium, somehow I found that sometimes it's shift, sometimes it does not shift. <laughs> so I don't know how robust is this shift. So I always want to, after all, I think STM is a um, surface technique, right? Um, mm -hmm. So it's better to have a bulk technique to fully check the results. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it just uh, to my experience, sometimes uh, for the when we study iron germanium, sometimes it have a shift, sometimes it doesn't. So that puzzles me a little bit. Okay. So the next question, uh, Monka. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you, Jiaxin, for the nice talk. Uh, probably you have mentioned it during the talk, but I haven't got it. So can you help me understand how can we relate the CDW intensity to the chirality? Um, it seems to be already a standard in the field, but uh, can you help oh, me yeah. understand? It's, yeah, to me, it's also not easy to understand. but um, I think, but chirality, I think we we'll mostly re refer to some original paper. They, they mentioned chiral CDW. Chirality means the intensity of the, uh, let me find the one. The intensity of uh, the, uh, intensity of the three peaks uh, define a chirality. It can be left hand and the right hand especially when it can be coupled with the magnetic field or internal mechanism. Um, and the people propose that... certain model to, model, uh, to, to, to characterize this. I think, um, uh, for example, we are running a DIP calculation to reproduce this feature. And then we found um, for the DIP calculation, it seems uh, when we have this, uh, th that we, we for a Kagami letter, we have to have three sets of uh, order parameter along three directions, right? To, to describe this three pair of peaks. So in our DFD calculation, we found uh, when we have uh, two over uh, two over three pi shift of the phase, then uh, we can have uh, if it's a uh, uh, positive. Uh, two over three pi, then it's have left clarity. Uh, if it's net, negative two over three pi, it's have uh, um, right hand clarity. It seems uh, to be that, mm -hmm. not very intuitive. Right, is this, through... is this chirality related to the loop current, uh, like the chirality in the loop current of the- 
Right, okay. it's also interacted with it. So once we have this model, it okay. can produce uh, this kind of uh, black peak in one sense. And on the other hand, once we have this uh, uh, three over pi uh, sh phase shift, then if, because this three order parameter, if not a zero or pi, then it blocks time reversal symmetry. Then if we calculate the side current, side to side current, it's non-zero. Then only through this, through this model, we, we found it uh, have loop current. And the loop current clarity can also be uh, rela uh, related with uh, the black peak clarity. So it kind of linked through an um, unintuitive model. Okay. Not not through um, direct physics picture. That is to my understanding. Okay. Uh, kind it of nothing... okay. not very intuitive, yeah. And it has nothing to do with the stacking order, right? In the C-axis. That I don't know, because we only have a okay. surface uh, effect. So when we study on the surface. But um, yeah, but there are carol transport uh, for this nature paper. They also propose similar model. I don't think they they have considered the C axis stacking in their model. Right. For their carrier transport, they only only considered I think within each layer has some kind of clarity. They they don't care about how it uh, uh, couples along C axis. Thanks. Okay, see any other questions? So if not, we maybe end, this is the end of this session. And uh, I think that okay. thank all the speakers and the audience again. Thank you. And, uh, Fan or Bin, do you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the next session is tomorrow 9 a.m. CST. So looking forward to see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.